Who's happy that the God is our Lord? That God is our Lord. Amen? Amen. I'm happy. Thank you, Jesus. See, even though we go through struggles, we can be happy. Amen? Amen. And joy, joy comes from deep within. Amen? That God gives us. Uh, I, I have a little uh, announcement. There's a little uh, wooden uh, box uh, in the foyer that's uh, a church. That's a wooden church or whatever. Uh, and uh, if there's people that you know that's going to need uh, some type of help, uh, uh, the youth are doing a ministry of uh, a ministry of helps and people that need food or people that need uh, whatever. Right? Y'all are y'all are uh, helping people in many many ways. Uh, we even bought some cat food the other day to help those that have cats, right? Because <laughs> they love their little kitties. <laughs> Yeah, and it tastes good too. Okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, there's going to be that box back there, and there's going to be some slips of paper, I guess, uh, that you can uh, put in the box and include uh, how many number of people are in the family and uh, uh, the address uh, to be able to reach them and how many children there are. So, did I do good, sister? All right, I did good. <laughs> and. Uh, pray for another person, but I want to give you a quick little testimony. <clears throat> there was a situation where uh, my eye doctor said I was going that, to have to have some injections in my eyes and uh, to keep it from, you know, losing my vision or whatever. And uh, uh, there's a lot of diabetic stuff with it or whatever. Anyway, so I, I wasn't liking hearing that. And uh, my, one of my other brothers had had to deal with that. And, and uh, Anyway, so I, we prayed a lot, and, and uh, uh, I, we went to, over there to the doctor, and they did tons of tests and everything, and they told me that I would not have to have that. So praise the Lord for that. <laughs> now they told me that I need to, to do right, and uh, the Lord's going to help me, and the Lord spanked me a little bit and uh, helped me do what I'm supposed to do. Did you have something to say? Okay, when I'm finished with mine, I'll let you hear. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> she's used to it, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, but the testimony uh, also wanted to continue that my blood sugar for the past uh, uh, month has been like perfect, like 100 or something. So the Lord's helping me to do that. And I wanted to give glory to God for he God helping me, God healing me. And doing that work real quick. Okay, real quick. Real quick. She's running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bye, supernatural recovery in Jesus name as the doctors are led by you and what they do I thank you Father God that she's a believer she's a believer in healing she's a believer in God that can heal and I thank you God that you do that work in Jesus name I thank you that there's angels that are encamped around about her Lord God I thank you that there are ministering spirits God that will minister peace to her in Jesus name and we thank and to her family and God you are in control the devil is not in control do y'all believe that today? Amen, Amen. Amen. Now, Father, I thank you for a supernatural anointing today. Yes. Lord God, that floods this house in Jesus' name. We thank you that that anointing crushes yokes of the enemy. That that anointing, Lord God, uh, is in control and the devil is not in control. We thank you from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, God. You are moving, Lord God, in every single life in Jesus' name. We are people, are people of faith and we believe, God, that when we uh, believe your word, Lord God, that the enemy is cast out. I thank you for the testimony of my sister. Now, Lord God, the testimony that you have given me to say. I thank you that we all have a testimony. Lord 
Lord God, that God is in control. In Jesus' name. We believe that. Amen. If you want to stand up, that's great. Worship the Lord this morning. We're going to just lift our voices to Him and give Him praise for all of His blessings, all of His mercy and grace, and most of all, His unconditional love. And we want to give and bless Him today.
worship you. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. Come into his presence today. Come into his presence. Every single one in this room, you are precious in God's sight. He loves you. He has a purpose for you. No matter how you feel, no matter what you've heard, he has a purpose for you.
had a lot of physical things going on. So anyway, we came out and, and uh, became a pastor at Wild Beach Community. And uh, after we did that, we still lived there in Bay City, and we decided we wanted to move out here. And uh, one Saturday, man, I'll never forget as long as I live, Well, and I came out just looking around. We didn't know anything about this area. And over by the, uh, right actually across the field back here, uh, all the way over there, uh, we went over and there was this young man out in the yard. He probably don't even remember this. And uh, we saw this house for rent. I don't know what he, I'm sure he did, wasn't working because I never did see him do any of that. But anyway, uh, I, I'm playing. Uh, he was out there doing some stuff around that house. And when and I rented the house, and we lived there many, many years. I don't even know how many now, but probably 10 or more. And uh, we met some of the nicest people we've ever met in our life. And this morning when I saw this young man walk in this house, it just, it's one of those things, like God never ceases to amaze me. Jason Allen, I want y'all to welcome my friend, Jason Allen. Thank you, I love you. Wow. Give him a little hand today. And Chelsea's so special to you too. You know that, right? I've known her since she was a teenager and uh, uh, several years ago. It's it, these connections to me. Again, I don't know if you think about them, but I do. I don't believe God. I know God don't make any mistakes. And I'm even to the point now, I'm not, I don't even know about coincidences. I believe he has order for everything he does. I believe that he has a plan for everything in our lives. Several years ago now, I, I can't keep track of, I hardly remember yesterday, but uh, uh, one of our little boys, Alex, was real sick. I don't know how old he was, six or seven, wasn't he, honey, or five maybe? How old was he? How old was he? Three months? That little. And, uh, oh, right. Well, anyway, I, I'll never forget that either. I remember some stuff. If it didn't happen yesterday, if it happened 40 years ago, I remember. But uh, went up to Houston, and uh, he was in the hospital. And it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good uh, diagnosis they were getting at all. Well, today that kid's close to six foot tall, I think. He's been here recently, Alex. And, you know, God has done so many miracles in this house. And I'm so thankful for that. And Jason, thank you for being here. You made my day, son. I have loved this guy. His parents became very dear friends of mine and one of us. And we've been going through with him and stuff. And we just love Barbara and Bernie so much. And, uh, so thank you for being here. I'm so glad this morning to have Pastor Wally home, too. I call him that because that's what he is part. He has such a love for people. And such an anointing on his life. I don't know how long he's going to be here, but I hope it's going to be long enough we can get him to preach before he goes back. But... He's been working now for a long time. I remember one of the last times he preached, I don't know if y'all remember this or not, at that time he was being called on to go out of state, remember, and he didn't really want to do it. But he believes in providing for his family, and Darlene appreciates that. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he did that, and he's been doing it now for too long. So we're believing God for him to find something here. And uh, this morning, Wally Rodriguez, would you just come and bless us with a special number, please, right there? Let's give him a good hand this morning. Okay. Love him so much. He knows how to play that piano, too. He's going to be working in the Ford Ark. Ford Ark? Well, that's still closer to South Carolina. Ford Ark is where? Texas. Did you say South Carolina? I thought it was where he has been. You've been in Alabama, have you, or somewhere? Alabama? They let you come back? <laughs> Y'all don't know what you're in for here. This man is a blessing. You have never heard of
All that you, all the prayers that you prayed up for my family, this morning, thank you very much. And the church family as well. Pray this song will be a blessing to you all. And uh, it's been a while since I've sang and played piano, but I'm going to do my best. So I hope this blesses your soul.
uh, send out a couple of claws today. They did this, and it's, it's scriptural to do it. They, 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 send a, they call them aprons at the time. But uh, we do this quite sometimes when there's someone that is really in desperate need of healing in their bodies or, or something going on. Uh, Mallory Roy came here when she was just a little girl. I don't remember how old, seven, eight years old, maybe, maybe even younger. And uh, her grandmother, Sharon Palmer, brought her up for prayer. She had been diagnosed with some kind of cancer. And it wasn't good. It wasn't a good diagnosis at all. God healed her standing right where these men are standing right now. And God healed her. She became a, what do they call it when they go around? A, a poster child for that, whatever that particular cancer was. And God used Mallory. Well, she was in a bad accident yesterday. She, God spared her. She crawled out of it, but she has some vertebrae that are broken. And men, I want you all to anoint a cloth. We're going to send it to her. And also, I want you, we're going to do another one here in a minute. I'll tell you what that is. But Lord, we come to you right now. I thank you for Mallory. I think that she, that baby has already known your healing power at a very young age. And Lord God, she brought others to church and said, have to be, do what you did. And she did some kind of hand language or something. But anyway, God, I thank you that Mallory has a heart that knowing that you are the God that heals. And we just say right now in the name of Jesus, regardless of what they're saying, if the doctors are saying, I thank you that you're the healer. We speak to that spine in the name of Jesus. We say your spine has to be in alignment with what God says. And God says, Mallory is healed this day by his word, by the stripes of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mallory is raised up whole this day in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Candy, would you come and get that one? And then I want you all to do another one. This one, uh, I, I felt this. I don't know that I've ever done this before in my life. But our uh, very sister Shirley is going in for surgery tomorrow. And I'm going to anoint this for her to carry with her. I don't know if they'll let her or not, but I think I'm her husband to get to carry it. And we're going to anoint this to go with her tomorrow. She has this surgery. I've, I've watched her, and she knows she's very special to me and, that, and, and to God. But uh, it hurts me when I see her in such pain in her, in her knees and so on. And God, I just thank you right now. I thank you that there is no fear in Shirley. I thank you, Father, that the peace of God that passes all understanding keeps her heart and mind into you, Christ Jesus. And I thank you as she goes forth tomorrow to be to, for them to uh, uh, correct this that's in her leg in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the peace of God overshadows her, overwhelms her, and the, the, the surgeon's hands and all the tools are going to be just exactly as they need to be to bring her some comfort in her life. In Jesus' name, we just thank you Father, as this is applied, that that, that that peace of God is just going to over, overwhelm her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. It's, uh, it's good to see them all here this morning. Oh, Cliff. I talked to Cliff. I don't talk, but I text him. And uh, he really is missing being here. He really wants to be here. But uh, again, he has to make a living for his family. You're never going to hear me say anything about that. I know uh, we've had some new folks that have just started back. They used to come years ago. And uh, Tammy and Carolyn, and I'm sure Carolyn, I mean, Tammy and Thomas have had to be days that I won't be able to, to be there on Sunday. But uh, the other night, uh, well, last Sunday, actually, she told me who she's married to. And uh, I said, I know him. It's so strange that, you know, little shy me would know somebody. But I know this guy, and I know him from uh, one time he was sitting up here at Stewart's, and uh, he had a little motorcycle, a little scooter. And I stopped, and I looked at it, and I had his card for the longest. I, I finally lost it out somewhere. But anyway, his name's Earl. I mean, you know, I know that name. I had to carry it for almost 70 years. But anyway, uh, I was called that all my life until recently. I've started using my business name now. I'm, I'm a business name now. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I, I met him, and uh, that's who Tammy's married to. And I bought that little scooter from him. I tell you, the world is so small when you, when you stay in it for a while. And then we got to see him and on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night, I think it was. Uh, anyway, that's why they're not here today. But uh, it's just it's just the things that God's doing in my life. I, I don't even know. I I'll be 73 here in a couple of weeks, and uh, y'all might want to mark June 21st on your calendar, just in case. But anyway, uh, I'll be 73 on that day, and uh, 
I uh, thank God for my life. I thank God I had my last shot Friday, and it, it did have a little bit of reaction, but I'm fine today. Thank God for prayer warriors. I'm going to talk about that this morning, matter of fact. This prayer chain. Now, once in a while, we get a little bit silly on it, but most times we don't. We get stay real serious, but it just takes one person, one person to start it, and then we all chime in. But the important thing is the prayers, the prayers. And uh, yesterday, I started looking at them. I, I didn't say anything for a while. I, I woke up at 6 yesterday morning, ready to come to the breakfast and everything, and uh, looking forward to it. I was, I was awake when it's breakfast time and all, but my head felt like it was coming off. So it hurt so bad. And I uh, had uh, dizziness and uh, uh, what else? Another symptom. But when I had the COVID back July, the only thing I had during that time was my equilibrium and my sinuses. That's what it was, the other thing, sinuses. And uh, so it, it's the same kind of uh, symptom I had then, except for the headaches. I didn't have the bad headaches then. But I just thank God that for prayer warriors, that when they get, when you put a prayer request on that chain, God hears them talking about Alec, different ones that in Mallory. God, God is a miracle God, church. You know, all churches don't want to recognize that, but God is a miracle worker. Amen. And he is here in this house today. If you need a touch in your life and your body today, God is able to do it. And I'm going to go to Philippians 1 this morning. And uh, uh, I'm uh, settling my mind. When I make my mind up to something, uh, after Wilma died, I gained 70 pounds. And uh, it wasn't a pleasant sight or feeling. I got a three, three seventy one, matter of fact. And uh, I went on Nutrisystem and lost it, uh, seventy one pounds of it. But uh, I don't know how about fifty of it snuck back up on me over the years, some way or another. But uh, I've made up my mind. I'm going to do it again. I've got to get this off. I know I'm going to feel better for one thing. Uh, but last, I, I watched the, the the service from last week. And I thought, who's that old fat guy up there? Barely able to walk around. I thought, that's enough of this. This is enough of this. I'm going to get it off. So y'all watch. By a year from now, I'll be back slim and trim and, and you know, and 73. Philippians 1 and 3. Thank you for being here today. I, I, what I'm going to talk about today is easy because it is something uh, that I'm full with this message today. See Jason again even adds to that fullness. But Philippians 1 verse 3 says this, I thank God upon my every remembrance of you. Always, in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy. I want to be joyful when I go to my God where you're concerned. I want you happy. I don't like to see people sad. There is one thing that I just will not allow. It tries to creep in once in a while. You have children, family. It's going to try to creep in your, your life too. But drama, I do not do drama. Comedy, yeah, no drama. And I just don't like it. But when I think of you, body of Christ, she told that, that song, man, I heard that so many years. Thank you for doing that song, The Family of God. We are family, church. There is, I can honestly tell you that uh, I feel closer, really, to many in this house than I do some of my own family, Amen. my blood family. Because y'all have become so much a part of me. Recently, we've lost some folks that, uh, not, they didn't leave angry or anything like that. They just felt that they needed to do something different. But they've been with me for 30, over 35 years. That's a long time to be in one church. And, uh, uh, I'm not going to sit here and hurt to lose them. But they felt God was leading them in a different direction. And again, there's there's nothing. They did it right. Uh, James and Michelle, they were sent out properly on so on. And, and Sheila, uh, I've known for a while, ever since she bought the place over in Angleton, I, I could see it coming on that it was getting worse and harder and harder for a few years. But anyway, they're still going to be a part of my life. There's people that I pastored almost 50 years ago that are still in my life. And there's something about when, when you engage the love of God and you're out there with it and you, you just openly love people, I can't 
help it. That's who I am. It's misunderstood sometimes, but oh well. I'm going to keep on doing it. Because I know that God is in control. I thank my God on every remembrance of you. I don't just look at you here on Sunday morning. I think of you and I pray for you at my house. Always in every prayer of mine for you and making requests with joy. When one of those requests comes across on the, on the prayer chain, I just jump in with those. I don't often, a lot of times I don't reply, but I'm praying. That's because I'm busy praying. Because when you bring those in, those are important. They're important to God. They're important to me. So uh, there's some in here, maybe you don't even know how to get on, but talk to Susan. We need more help on there. There are people here that I know you pray, and you pray the prayer of faith. Somebody did it for me yesterday. I read one of the prayers, and immediately when I hung up, I was, I was just starting to pray in the Spirit when I was reading it. And when I, when I got through with it, I folded up my little phone, I was healed immediately. All the symptoms were gone. Immediately. And that's what God does. That's what he does. He said, I make requests, uh, in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. We got on a little bit with yesterday with Shannon. They were talking about her, uh, uh, Susan Gillen, passing the baton for bossiness or something. I don't know. And uh, I thought, man. So I did reply. I said, well, I've known Shannon since she's a little bitty girl. And she's had that on her for a long time. Somebody gave her that baton a long time ago. But uh, she says she was shy, but I don't remember that. Do you, Judy? I don't remember her being shy. <laughs> uh, we know where she got it. Got it. But uh, just from that time till now, what I'm saying is that there's some of you I've been in your life for a long time. This guy sitting right back here was 19 years old when he came into this church. He's an old great-grandpa now, ain't he? Yeah. A great-grandpa. How many? Ten, Ten great-grandkids? Yeah. Somebody needs to slow up. I've only got eight. <laughs> wow. But David came in when he was 19 years old. Didn't know come here from Sickle. That's an Opie saying. But God has trained him. He and his precious brother, Kenneth, both of them, they got in their mother. They got into the Word of God. They were hungry when they came. Yes. And they began to get into the Word of God, and they began to uh, absorb themselves with that Word of God. And Kenneth, as a matter of fact, is a, a memorizer. Yeah. Yeah. And that man memorizes more things than you'll ever imagine. Memorize. He was our worship leader for 20, over 20 years in this house. And God has develop a body of Christ here that we are a family. Amen. And if you may be away for a while or something may be different for a while, we're still the family of God. He said, I, from the very first day until now, being confident, I'm confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> what I want for everybody in this room today, all of us, I want all of us to prepare ourselves for, we're up in the year of 21 now, but I want us to prepare ourselves for changes that are coming. Changes that are coming to this house. Changes that God is in control of. Then you are all a part of the body of Christ in this house. I don't want to be anywhere else. I'll tell you right now. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here with you. I really mean that. I don't have any desire. Uh, I planned a trip to Oklahoma for uh, first of the month, but I've decided I'm not going to go. But uh, uh, I don't have a desire to go back up there. I didn't want to go right now, but anyway, I'm not going. But I don't have a desire to move back there. One time this guy called me. I've been on the uh, going out quite a bit, and I used to travel quite a bit preaching. And I'd been out in, in Colorado in uh, it's a, a, a town called, uh, I forgot the name of it. It's out by Vail. And Avon. How could I forget Avon? In Georgia, they're all the same people. But anyway, uh, Avon, Colorado. And I'd gone there, and uh, they had built a church. I don't know if any of y'all ever heard of Beaver Creek. It's on one mountain, 
And on the other side of that, uh, right across, it's a valley, and, and that valley is Avon. Beaver Creek is just a, a hill over there with a bunch of rich people. Anyway, over here on this side is Avon. <clears throat> and uh, uh, my friend built a house right literally in the side of that mountain. And, uh, a house, a church, in the side of that house of God in, in that place. And uh, I went out several times, and every time God just came in there and just really blessed and moved in those meetings. And uh, he called me uh, one day, and he said, uh, you know, we, we've been praying, and we'd like to have you to come, and we'll pay you a certain, it was a really a good salary. They said, we'll pay you if you'll come and be our uh church prophet. I thought, what? I never heard, especially never been offered a job. When I move in the gifts of the Spirit, it's not a thing to be for sale or nothing. It's for people's lives to be changed and enhanced and, and left. And so, uh, it just kind of took me back, and, and I love Colorado, by the way. But uh, I, I didn't even really give it a second chance to come into my mind. Because I knew where God had established me. Yeah. He had established me right here. Yeah. He hadn't told me any different. He hadn't told me, I want my next uh, place of residence to be in heaven. Yeah. I want to be right here with you. A few years ago, I got to talking about trying to, especially after Mama died, uh, for two years, I was a basket case. Some of you saying that I hadn't outgrown it. But anyway, uh, I was a bad shepherd. And uh, I was just trying to decide to, you know, who to work, pass the torch to and go on and go on. And finally one day, Cliff said, Pastor, you just need to quit even talking about that. Just quit talking the exact word. That's what he was. Y'all remember that? Some of you probably remember that. He said, you need to be here until God's ready to take you home. I took that as a prophetic utterance from our drummer. And that's my plan now. I don't want to be anywhere else. I want to be here with you. I want you to be here with me. We've been, uh, the COVID had just messed up a lot of stuff. And you notice we don't stand up here every Sunday and beg for money. We hardly ever even mention offerings at all. But uh, uh, I know what we have to deal with. And some things have really been heavy on us during this storm and all that, the, the free storm and stuff. We've been out a lot, a lot. And uh, <clears throat> the account was getting a little bit, wasn't low, but it was getting lower than I liked it. I like to keep it at a certain place so that we always have at least a couple months, you know, pay. We don't have a lot of debt. All we have is our monthly stuff going on. Anyway, uh, I just talked to God about it. And this same person that did this, and I'm not going to say who or even let you even give me a hint that it might be, but uh, more than one time when this has happened, I'm very close to this person, by the way, very close. But it has nothing to do with that. That person is in tune with this house and loves this house. And sent a, 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 a large, large check this week. That's going to help compensate for the lack that COVID thought it was going to rob us of. Hello. All right. Or the storm actually. And so, you know, God knows what to do. He's in charge. And he's in charge of your finances. He's in charge of everything. And I'm confident that this, this very thing, that the work that he's begun in you, I feel by the Spirit of God right now, there's more than one in the room, that you're feeling something inside of you happening right now. There's some that there's actually transition going on in you. And you're not exactly uh, understanding it. And I'm even going to say, what well, I'm even seeing further. I've seen that you're not real comfortable with it because it's something that's so new. But it's God that's working in you. I'm going to say right now, I'm not taking the, the blame nor the, the credit, but I'm praying that he will, the, the work that he's begun in you, that he's going to perform it. Amen. That it's going to be him. Those giftings that have been lying dormant inside of you are going to begin to come forth. Amen. Those hopes, those dreams that you had, God is going to begin to perfect those and bring them and perform them in your life. From this day forward, I speak this. Oh, 
over every man, woman, boy, and girl in this room right now. Things are changing. Things are changing. Don't compare yourself with somebody else in the body of Christ. I don't compare myself with other preachers. We have some of the smartest men and women in this house that can teach a lot better than I can. And I don't say that for any other reason than it's the truth. We have some smart folks up in here. And they know how to deliver the word of God. And make it very interesting and make it very plain and make it very real. But you know what? I don't let them intimidate me. I just call them smart of them and go on. <laughs> no, I don't. I appreciate those gifts. Church, we're a body. It's not a one-man show. Amen. It's the body of Christ coming forward. Yes, we have to have people in certain places and, and with certain positions, so on and so forth. I understand all that. But <clears throat> bottom line is, it's God's church. Right. You're his church. And that that he's doing in you, I want to read that again. Being confident, let me start back up here for your, well, way back up here, way back up here. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Surely I think about you when we're not in church. It hurts me when I see the pain in your face. After tomorrow, you're going to be prancing around here like one of the of Santa Claus and reindeer. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. But anyway, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. We started this work together. I went into the class this morning a little bit. And Brother Hagee was talking about stuff. Actually, it's stuff that's already gone on now. It's happened, but a lot of it's going to happen. I, I have to come on up here. Y'all don't do that. Anyway, <clears throat> stuff that's going to happen for sure. I believe we're in the end times. I have no doubt about that. I believe the Lord Jesus is coming. But when I was there, Brother Hagee was saying one thing that I, 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 uh, I know is a fact. We need to be letting people know there is a hell. We need to let people know there is a heaven. I know about you. I want to go to heaven. Amen. It's kind of like growing up. I used to be poor. I ain't poor no more. Hello? I'm not rich, but I don't lie. God has blessed my life. Amen. But I tell you what, when I want something, it's, it's better to be able to pay for it than to just go over there and lust and look through it and win the shop, you know? Hello? I'd rather be able to do it. Amen. I don't have any debt. I don't have any. Zero. God has blessed my life. I have bills like everybody else. You understand? But I don't have any debt. God has blessed me. My truck that's not out there today. I hate that part. <laughs> I paid cash for that book. Because God has blessed me. Well, you get rich off this church. I guarantee you that ain't worth it. <laughs> God has blessed me with a business sense. With investment sense. And now he's blessed me with that in this last day. I don't know why I'm telling you. But I am telling you for a reason. If you get tired of being in the mess you're in or the place you're in and want to move on up, then do it. Amen. Make in your mind that God is going to bless you. Amen. A few years ago, God showed me that he was going to bless somebody in this house. Multiple blessing. And it was going to be a real tithe. Someone that ties a dime on every dollar. He showed me that, and I told the body about it. Two different people came up to me that day. One of them, both of them said the same thing. That's going to be me. That that I told you about happened this week was one of those people. God just keeps blessing this individual over and over and over and over again. God will bless you. If you get really sincere with him and do all things unto him, not unto man, but unto him, he'll bless your life. He's blessed my life. When I write my text first of the month, my tithe text first thing I write above everything else. 
Because that belongs to him, not me. All right. Just threw that in for no reason other than it's the word of God. Go on now to the second chapter, verse 1. If there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in of love or consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that you might be like me minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. My mind right now is this body at WPCC is beginning to grow not only in number, we're growing in, in spirit more than more importantly in spirit. We're growing in confidence in our God. We're growing in, in prayer for one another. All areas. Maybe we don't talk about a lot of stuff, but God is doing a work within this house. Because people have an open heart. You go to church anywhere. I said this uh, for a long time. We need to be planning where God wants us. Yeah. We need to be there. Oh, well, I don't agree with Well, we may not agree with everything. But if God has planted us somewhere, that's where we need to be. Yeah. And you know what else I'll tell you? If we're not planted, if God didn't plant us, we don't need to stay. Hello? Amen. I ain't going nowhere. I know where I'm planted. I know where I'm planted. God is in control of your life and he wants you, your joy to be full. Let nothing be done, verse 3, through uh, strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let every, uh, let each esteem in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. In other words, think about other more than yourself. For some time now I've been doing that. I've been taking self-analysis. And uh, you used to do that, and I'd come up uh, with a bad report card. <laughs> but they, uh, boy, I got one that went home to a lot of folks. I don't know where that went, but I know how that is. <clears throat> but I found it doesn't have to be that way. We make straight A's. My son graduated high school above, eight points above what I thought you were even able to have. That's a brilliant one. 4.8. I thought four points was as high as you could get, but somewhere or another, he, you know, he found some extra points. He didn't. He did because he's smart. God's blessed him. And I know we got a lot of smart folks up in here. But God, and don't do anything through or because you think you're a little better. But as I've been thinking about some things in my life, I've got a little bit better, uh, uh, you know, opinion of me. There's times I just go look at the mirror because I'm just so pretty. I just can't stand it no longer. i got to see me again. I'm serious. I got pictures when I was growing up. I was ugly. I was. But God just changed all that. The Spirit of God will do something for you. He will move. That's why I'm kind of concerned about, about losing the weight. I don't want to mess up any of that. Oh. <laughs> Y'all know I've got to have a little bit of fun. Think about other people, but do self-analysis. Verse 4, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now, that does not mean lusting after your neighbor's stuff. That means take into account. When someone is lonely or hurting or, or whatever's going on, be able to have compassion upon that person and not just think about your stuff. Amen. Have you ever talked to somebody and have tried to have a conversation and you're trying to say something and boy, maybe they start telling you their stuff. Yeah. That way, let you finish your story. We've got one friend that uh, he uh, he has a uh, an affliction and. Uh, <clears throat> He's real bad about just butting in. And I, lately I've been telling him, you just need to stop that. I want to talk a little bit. He did it the other day in front of somebody else. And uh, I said, you just need to quit that. Let somebody else talk. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, well, that's the only way. And he said, I don't mean that. I, said, I know you don't, but you need to be trained. Twenty-some years old, you need to be trained. So I'm going to be a trainer. But there's other people... This is not talking about 
me showing you up. I'll put it in plain words. <laughs> but verse 5 said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You know, <clears throat> I believe when he was, got the wrong one. <clears throat> I believe when he was walking around ministering to the people. And you see all the mass crowds. Compassion, you saw that many times in the scriptures, where just compassion overtook him. When he's with his that, uh, ones that worked with him, there was times that it just, compassion just consistently overtook him. But who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Amen. Um. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. You know, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to. That's right. He's the Son of God. He loved you so much, he gave his life. You think, well, they took it. No, they didn't. He gave it. He, got, he did exactly what he was designed and formed to do, to come here to do that very thing. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. Why are you sweating it today? God's got it in control. Why are you letting anything bring fear, doubt, unbelief, anything else that harms you? Why are we allowing that to rise up in our lives when the Lord has done something very important? He gave his only begotten son that when we just call out on his name, we call his name. And in the name of Jesus, every knee's going to bow. COVID's going to bow. Any old thing you want to mention, it's going to bow to the name of Jesus. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm telling you today, church, he is alive and well. Amen. He has a body of people that are going to believe him. What I'm trying to say this morning, I want to bring us all to a place that we are more open more receptive of the things God wants to do. Some have been physically going through some things, I've been one of those. But God's got in control. Yes, He does. I went in, uh, now, should I tell that? I'm going to, y'all know I'm going to tell you. I want the ear, nose, and throat this week. Raise your hand. Now, this one time, I want you to raise your hand. How many's ever seen about three or four inches up inside of your nose? Me and Susan. Her. You did too? Did, did you raise your hand, sir? Way up in your nose? It's horrible. Horrible. No wonder all, I can't say the word even though Wilma's not here, but no wonder all that mucus is stuck. It's got to get out of there. Because it's horrible looking. And I, oh my goodness, and, and she stuck a, a, it looked like tweezers to me with cotton on it up my nose first. She said, I just want to put this in here to kind of uh, relax and open it up a little. I said, well, thank you very much. <laughs> and she said, I know she's a little bit sensitive. I said, yeah, it's uh, bringing back COVID test flashback. <laughs> but I, tried, I think it went all the way to my brain <laughs> on that one. And uh, so, anyway, she didn't think it was funny, but I did. Anyway, then we go to another room. She finally takes all that mess out, and she gets this little flashlight on a big, long uh, little thing, and it had a flashlight on the end of it. And when she started, I was watching it up on the thing at first, and uh, when she got through, she said, well, Mr. Patel, I want to show you what I found. I thought, okay. I wasn't ready for that. 
I watched them when they did my open heart. When they started doing my open heart, I didn't watch all of it. But when they were doing the calf court, I did watch that. And that was horrible. This, your nose looks worse than it does. Anyhow, she went ahead with it. And, and uh, so she starts explaining what she found. I said, well, I know what it is. I could tell you the Oklahoma version, but I'll just say you this. You see a little of that, but she said, I said, and then I started looking a little closer. I said, what's that black, little black thing? She said, that's a hole. She said, you've got extra holes in your nostril, and that's what's causing all this sinus stuff. It's, I guess the best way I can tell you is back rushing, I guess. Anyway, I know you didn't care, but I just want to keep you on that Now you got an old, trust me. You don't want, I, I, I really wish I took some still pictures and brought them off. But anyway. <laughs> Now I know what's going on. Now I've got to have a CT scan on it this week. Get in there and see if my brain's in there. Dodie wants to check her brain. They found it this week. And uh, so now I'm going to see if I got one. Psalms 51. I'll get back to being serious now. They're just times I just, I, I told myself yesterday, I'm going to be very serious today. I'm going to be very perpendicular. I'm not going to be me. I'm not going to be me for one day. I just have, I don't know where all that stuff comes from. I just think of it. You know, and I want to share with you, I want your life to be happy. When I pray for you, I pray for your joy. If I can bring some of that to you, I'm going to do it. Is that all right? Y'all want me to change? Y'all want me to change and be an old perpendicular preacher? No. no. Louder, please. Louder, please. No. no. Psalm 51. You picked a good day to come, folks. Psalm 51, verse 1. I'm almost finished. Have mercy upon me, God. Now, this is very serious. According to thy loving kindness, according unto thy multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. <clears throat> Wash me thoroughly, not thoroughly, but thoroughly, from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. God, I don't want to sin. I don't want to go to that hell he was talking about this morning. I don't want to go there. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. You know you don't need somebody to tell you when you're sinning. You've got something on the inside of you that tells you. That tells you when something's not going right. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about it in the spirit realm. And immediately you can confess that sin to God and be forgiven. Amen. Amen. Well, verse 4 says, Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight. Now what uh, was going on here... Uh, this is a psalm when Nathan the prophet had come to him and exposed him with his adultery. That's what this is talking about, by the way. This is what's going on right here. And so David is dealing with that. He said, yeah, uh, uh, the Elysium got on that Wednesday night about blaming uh, Adam, blaming Eve, and Eve blaming the serpent, and the serpent blaming the devil, and all that. Well, notice so David here, he wasn't blaming Bathsheba for taking that bath out there where he could see her. He was blaming himself and that it was an insult to God. Yes. His action had been an insult to God. Excuse me. <clears throat> Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. God, I hear you clearly, and your judgment is right. Yes. Your judgment is fair. Your judgment is it's going to help me change and become the person I need to be. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and sin did my mother, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part of thou shalt, in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Verse 7, purge me with this, and I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. In other words, David's saying, I've been brought down to a low place. I'm in a desperate place. But God, I want to be restored. I'm asking forgiveness from you. And I want to be restored in my life. I don't want to stay in this maim of condition. 
I want to be whole again. I want to be walking in what I know that you created me to be. <clears throat> Maybe to hear the joy and gladness that in, in verse 9 says, Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Cleanse me, God. And now he says, verse 10, I love one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible right here. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I'm honest to tell you, I'm not perfect. I know that for sure, more than anybody. But one thing I know also, I know I have a heart for God. I know I have a heart for a God that is able to do just exactly what it says here, to create in me a clean heart. I have a clean heart toward God and to his people. I don't like to think bad about people. I don't like to hear bad reports about people. <coughs> I don't like that. I want to say something and invest something in people's lives to make them happy. I want to do something to make somebody's life more prosperous in every sense of the word. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew in me a right uh, and renew a right spirit within me. I'm not going to be sitting here with that pitchfork going back there on David, great grandpa David. I'm not going to be throwing it off on him. I'm going to be getting things right up in here. I'm going to be getting things right before my God. Are y'all getting anything out of this this morning? Amen. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore. That's something a lot of folks need right now, restoration. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. I am about to go into prophetic mode, so get ready. God has a plan for many lives in this house right now. God wants you to begin to release the giftings that he's placed with inside of you. Whatever has held you back, shake it off and move forward into what God has for you. Amen. There are lives, there are lives that need you. There are people that need you. There's just something. I talked to someone years ago. They talked about how they, uh, they seemed like they've got counselor written over their head. I, uh, people that I meet, and my friends that go places with me will tell you this. I don't know. I just sit there. And people just start coming up. And uh, we were out one the other night, and this woman just started telling me her whole life. I didn't care. You know? But I thought, why are you telling me all this stuff? I don't want to hear all that. Don't need to anyway. It's all right you're doing it, but I don't want to hear all that. But there's just something. There's something that's drawing people to you. We'll go further. In that drawing, there's a reason for it. There's because God has placed within you his love, his power, his word, his anointing. All of these things combined is going to bring you to the place where he can use you. And I don't want you to raise your hand, but I know this is going deep into the spirit of many in this room right now. <clears throat> that you've been holding back for whatever reason. But God, the excuses need to fall from the wayside. And we need to break out of that mess and begin to move into what we know we're called to do. We need to begin to move into what God has placed within our lives. We need to begin to move in the spirit of God once again. And understand that if it's prophetic that he wants us to be doing, then let's prophesy. If it's psalmist that he wants us to do, let's sing. If it's being quiet. Well, that one, I don't know. But anyway, whatever it is, let's do it. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Woo, that made me happy. Renew that right spirit in me, God. Don't cast me away. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. I, want, I am a free spirit. I'm not going to be bound by nobody. Nobody. I'm not going to be bound by nobody. I'm not going to control anybody. They're not going to control me. Hello. Except the Spirit of God. <clears throat> Boy, that got quiet all of a sudden. <clears throat> we don't need somebody controlling us. <clears throat> we need the control of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 24, 12 and 13 says this. 
And because iniquity or sin shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Verse 13, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. I want you to tell, I want to tell you right now, we're in a, an endurance, endurance stage right now. Because I believe the end is near. We're in that time of enduring to the end. Even though sin abounds, it don't have to come near us. Even though sin and that don't get self-righteous over that, just praise God. Praise God that it don't have to control your life. Things that maybe one time controlled our lives are, are gone in the name of Jesus. They're done away with. 2 Thessalonians 3.13 says, Brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And I honestly believe that's what's happened to a lot of people. I'm, I'm calling this mess that's going on in me right now COVID way. You know, we got to blame it for something. Let's blame it for something, really, that it did. <clears throat> but I, I'm just going to call it that. So by that, I want to be delivered totally of COVID. Amen. So I'm going to get all this fat off. Y'all just watch. You think I'm just talking? You watch. You watch me put it on. Now you watch me take it off. 250 by Christmas. It's all COVID, huh? 250 by Christmas. By Christmas. 250 by Christmas. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Jim prophesied that. I'm being serious with you. There's reasons things happen. But we're enduring to the very end. Father, I thank you today for this body. God, I want each one to know that what I spoke today is from my heart and my spirit. That I don't love one above another. I love them all in this room right now, God. And I know that you love them. And I thank you, sir, for those giftings that are right before me today. Those giftings that are going to come forth in whatever measure it needs to be, however it needs to happen, those are going to come forth in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for release in Jesus' name. Release from any bondages that have held us back. Oh, I just magnify your name. Thank you, Mr. Burns. I magnify you right now, Lord. Go ahead and play this, please. please. And all things that swim become shadows in the light.
want you right now to pray for your brother and your sister on your right or left. You don't have to have any formality with it. Just right now, speak blessing over their life. Just thank God for that brother and that sister. You're your family. They're part of your family, the family of God. Just speak blessing upon them now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Pray one for another. Lift one another. Love one another. God bless you today. Oh, yes, such a beautiful, oh, the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. In the light of you, God. One more time. Out of my mouth.